Come correct or don't come at all. This is the Hard Zog Hustle Podcast. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And, and we're talking about the hustle, strategy, and mindset you need to win in the areas of your finance, your purpose, and your future. You know what I'm saying? If you have heart and you want to learn how to activate the power of your hustle, then this is the podcast for you, baby. For you, baby. Congratulations. And now, your hosts, Anthony and Janilka Hartzog. Janilka Hartzog. This is how it should be done. As welcome to the Hardzog Hustle Podcast. My name is Anthony Hardzog, and I'm joined by my beautiful wife, Janoka Hardzog here. Hello, everyone. What's up? What's up? <laughs> and on this podcast, we'll be talking about the everyday hustle as it relates to business, relationships, finances, and business. What are we talking about today? Today, we're jumping into numbers. We're jumping into our debt payoff story, which was a pretty big deal and is a pretty big deal. Uh, where do we start? Where do we start with that? Uh. Uh, so um, if you guys don't know or have not heard, we paid off $114,000 of debt in 23 months. Can we get some claps for that, please? I'll clap myself. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody in there. Nobody, <laughs> nobody's here. Uh, we paid off $114,000 in 23 months. And we're going to talk about that story as it relates to how we how we paid it off, what was the game plan, and everything in between. Yes. So let's see. We got married May 2016, moved to Dallas June 2016, started our debt payoff journey like January, February 2017. So 2017 That's, of January, New Year's just yeah. started. So, the new, so let's, yeah, let's backtrack. The New Year's resolution for me was to save more and travel more. That was what I said that I wanted us to do. That, how are you going to save more and travel more? And that's, that was your response? Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you think about it like this, we talk about when you have a goal, right? It's normally, all right, the goal is, is, is concurrent with what you're trying to do. So saving more and traveling more is complete opposites, complete extremes. Yeah. <laughs> it is not like, all right, I want to save more and then potentially save down for a house. Or It's also wanna, not specific. Yeah, yeah, it was like, oh, I want to travel more, maybe travel to Maldives. Those are like those are like along the same paths. But you're talking about paying off debt and yeah. then traveling more. Those are complete opposites on the spectrum. It's what I wanted to do, okay? That doesn't matter. <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, that doesn't really make sense. And then also during that time, uh, Christmas 2016, we had used, well, we had to, we dipped into our savings really to uh, buy Christmas gifts. Because we buy Christmas gifts for your aunts, your uncles, your nieces, your nephews, your cousins, your mother. As we should. <laughs> We we have a whole list of uh, people we have that, a we, big that family we buy Christmas gifts for. And everyone deserves a gift. A gift, sorry. Even if they're um, naughty, they get a gift. Yes. So that was kind of the kickoff. And then that was the beginning of you listening to podcasts. Yep. Uh, so, you started listening to podcasts. So yeah, around that time, 2017, that was when we were trying to... I started changing. We moved down to Dallas. We yeah, had, I don't know what made you make that shift to say, like, I'm going to just listen to podcasts. That, so, oh, you know what it was? The commute, because now I'm commuting, okay, yeah. and we're in Dallas, so we're commuting, you know, 25, 35 minutes, and you're in the car, so I was like, how can I how can I utilize this time versus listen to the radio, because be, being from Brooklyn, you got your radio personalities, and you kind you get kind of used to them. Yeah, so, and the, you're trying to say Dallas Dallas radio wasn't that no, good? No, 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 we got, <laughs> the Dallas radio's fantastic, we got, we got some great stations here, but I wasn't used to it at first, uh -huh. so I didn't know who was who, I didn't know who was supposed to be funny, who yeah. was this, so it was and like, then the music played is, yeah, so you coming from Brooklyn, New York, you're, yeah. you're think you're, you used to like, you know, pop smoke, and you know, especially, <laughs> you know, during that time or whatever, so I didn't really have any connection during that time, so I started listening to podcasts. And he was listen, listen. Okay, you're gonna learn one thing that once Anthony gets on the path, he there's no one. He's Hulk. There's no one stopping him. He's just going straight through. So once he started listening to the podcast, it was like in the morning while getting ready. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I'm still in bed sleeping. I work so I'm at in home. the shower listening to it. Listen to it. He, <laughs> I'm he's my in the car on. listening I'm to it. Right. To it then he's in the car to work. Listen to it. On the car back. Listen to it. Come in the house. Listening to it. And so you were really listening to podcasts. Then. I was definitely listening to a lot of podcasts. And one of the earlier podcasts was more about financial literacy. Mm -hmm. So I heard these stories of people. I listen to a lot of podcasts, but I heard these stories of people paying off debt. And I was like, wow, this is just life changing. Yeah. Life changing information. And I wanted to know more about 
those people's stories. So what I I just started listening to it every single day. I'm listening to it during lunch, in my lunch break, day. in the gym, driving <laughs> back. I'm in traffic for 35, 45 minutes. So I got nothing better to do with my time. Yeah. So when I come home with these stories, you're like, what the, what the hell like, are you talking about? What are you about? talking about, right? So you listen to the podcast, and finally I start being forced to listen to it. I wasn't listening to it, but because you, it's on, it, you're hearing it in the you background. just hear it. And you hear these stories about people uh, paying off debt and stuff like that. People that were making way less than us, people that are single, all this type of stuff. And that was what made me say, like, well, maybe we can pay it off. I don't know. but So what made you say that you think that this is a p possible path for us? Mainly just because of the stories. Because other than that, my thought process was what's the reason we're paying off this debt, right? Because we, you know, high income earners, we pay all our bills on time. We'll pay it off at some point, but what's the rush really, right? Um, so what's There never was a conversation, I think, in life that you have that you pay off school debt. No, it doesn't happen. No. Like I went to for grad school. I went to a private school, especially. <laughs> so it kind yeah. of was like the debt's going to be there the same way like some people for a car debt, it's going to be there. So and that's that. So you said one thing that kind of hit you was the stories. Like what stories do you feel like you listen to? It was like, oh, wow. OK. I can't pinpoint the specific ones, but I do remember the people that was uh, that were single would make me kind of think about it. And then people, even if they were a couple, they were making way less than us and paying off a significant more. Yeah. And so I was like, what and how? Like, what they doing that we can't do? <laughs> One of the stories I heard was this lady who had a, she lived in a project, very similar to us, um, upbringing, and she had, a, her car got shot up. Like, listen, we, we grew up in that. We know it. We, yeah. We grew up in that. We've seen guns. We've heard it. So we grew up in it. Was, I didn't see no gun. <laughs> we've, we've heard gunshots. You've Maybe heard not, gunshots. We've heard gun, We've seen more guns in Texas than we did. I was to say when I go in, to the gun range, yeah, <laughs> we hear less gunshots out here, but we we see more guns here. Yeah, exactly. That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's actually yeah. Um, so I heard a story about this lady paying off debt, and she had to sell her car. And the gentleman was like, "Why can't you sell your car?" She's like, "Well, it has gun gun bullets in it. Yeah, bullet holes in it." He's like, "How does that happen?" I was like, "Well, I live in the projects. That's how it happens. That's how it happens." And hearing those stories of hearing a person that looked like me going, I mean, we don't got to go through that, but hearing those stories kind of was like, oh, we can definitely do this. Right. And at the time, I think um, we weren't on Instagram, so we didn't really know about other stories besides just like listening to the podcast. And most of the podcasts didn't have black people on it. Yeah. Right. Um, very rarely you would hear a black person come on and speak or see that. So that yep. was another thing. So finally, I got on board, I think like around February, we took a course, like a Wait, Four, ten week. Oh, before you do that, we Christmas came around. We're past Christmas. No, but we got it. There was a part about that that you. I don't think you went into. What other? What other? So <laughs> when we paid off, when we bought these gifts, uh huh, we had this credit card debt, uh huh, and I can't. We had to dip into our savings. Mm -hmm. And when we dipped into our savings, it was more along the lines of like, all right, we shouldn't have to dip into our savings to, to pay, pay off, Christmas gifts. to pay off Christmas gifts, and right. that's when the conversation kind of got more serious with us. Yeah. We had the we had the savings. We had the well. So that's my thing with a lot of things. I'm like, if we have the money, what's the conversation? <laughs> exactly. That was the conversation. It was like, well, we got to dip into our savings to pay off this debt. That shouldn't be the case. That was my opinion on it. Right. I just and you with it. and you was like, nah, I'm not with that. Like, <laughs> if we got the money. Why, why, what's the what's issue? What's the conversation? What's um, the issue? Yes, but then I finally came around with you constantly listening to the podcast. I was listening to them, and so then we took a, for Valentine's Day, <laughs> yeah. such a nice gift, um, gave you a, a course that we could take together, um, and we took that course together. Maybe it was a 10-week yeah. course. Um, what made you come around at that time? Oh, we listened to the podcast. Okay. <laughs> you just asked that. I'm like, okay. that didn't change. Um, that, you know, once I bought into it, I bought into it. Yeah. But I still was along the lines of like, okay, we can do, we'll do this, but there's no time frame to it. So when we first started paying off debt, we didn't say to each other like, all right, let's pay it off by this time. Yeah. It's just like, all right, let's start. Um, so that we started... I think we started telling. I think we told like told like friends and family, but not yeah. everyone either. We kept we kept our story internal. We didn't yeah. tell much people. We was like, let's start this thing. Let's figure it out. And telling people wasn't even on no, our minds at that time because we started our our uh, Instagram page January twenty seventeen. Yeah, but the point of it really was just to 
have like family and friends still connect with us while we were in another city. So it was like newlyweds in a new city and how we're navigating that. Right. Um, and then eventually the money, the debt payoff part of it got in, you know, was part of the story. But when we started the page, that was the initial thing. Um, and I didn't want to share any numbers cause I didn't want people in my business. That's, that was the honest thing. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about the, the 10 week course. Yeah. Cause so that, that was, that was interesting because you tell me you number one. You're not talking about money as much as you should, but number two, now you're talking about it around other people. Now you're talking around other people, but it's strangers, so I think yeah. it, it doesn't feel like much pressure either because we're all there for the same, uh, same theme, the same need. We're all listening in, doing the homework, working together in groups. So I think it was a great time. I really enjoyed it, honestly. Um, <laughs> yeah, we were there showing up every single week for ten weeks, and some of the conversations was really enlightening because. Mm -hmm. They're talking about things like, all right, not just paying off debt for, for yourself. You're talking about paying off debt for family. You're talking about life insurance. You're talking about a, uh, a bunch of different topics around right. money. So now you're forced to have these conversations you never had before. But then also I think what we had recognized as well, which you know that, how differently people run as couples run their money, how, and how, yeah. the money in their household, right? Uh, so for us, we have everything together. We have our own accounts, but... Yep everything is together right um and then you know we hear couples they're like nothing is together at all everything is separate like i will pay the mortgage i will pay the bill you pay the groceries you pay the daycare and so hearing that was kind of like oh okay well how's that well, how does that work yeah. too <laughs> and we saw you hear it all the time but seeing it and seeing people yeah. have these conversations in front of you is like wow that's that's different you got seems weird right yeah, but you got the guy his own. and you hear these stories all the time about the guy controlling the money and the finances in the household and you're like all right well that's the normal but it doesn't have to be the norm yeah no so we took that course um while we're taking the course we're paying off debt um i think three months into paying off the the debt is when we paid off maybe like i don't know if it's three months maybe it's two to three months i, I could scroll back in our page and see like twelve thousand dollars or some some crazy amount yeah um and that i think we shared that number and that was when we said to ourselves, like, okay, wait, <laughs> we just paid twelve thousand yep. dollars in two to three months. We should probably put a deadline. We should we can put a deadline to this as to when we will pay this off. Um, and we came up with the number of my thirtieth birthday, which we did. But we'll take you along that journey. But that was when we first shared it. That's when we first decided, like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. So when we said, I was I was very ambitious. To pay, oh, off, to pay off. I was very ambitious. I would say to pay off this debt. So when we said, you know, when oh, we I said, when we said, <laughs> I thought of something. <laughs> what? Go ahead. No, just even when I gave him the course uh, for Valentine's Day, I also gave him a contract. Oh, okay, let's yes. talk about that. That's the key. Um, well, Why did you give me a contract to pay off some debt? Well, I told <laughs> you guys, he's like the Hulk. <laughs> when he has his mind on something, it's like. We are on this train and nothing is stopping it, yeah. right? And so the differences that we had or have still was that I felt like we can pay off this debt, yep. but we still need to live a life. And if it was up to him, we would not live a life. We would Listen, just go I'm not gonna, straight and I'm don't not worry about us, nothing. I'm not going to have us doing nothing that's crazy out here, but no, 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 I'm going to no. make sure we get our goal or make sure we get there fast. That's, that's your thing, which everybody has a different preference. So I was like, all right, listen. We got, I'm obsessed with Beyonce. She may have a concert. If her concert comes around, we're this, going. This is what's in the contract. This is in the contract, I swear. We got to find it so we can show it. Um, the contract said if I a actually concert, think it's in my favorites in my phone. If a concert comes up and it's Beyonce, we're we got to go. Did any concerts come up? I, shout out to Beyonce because no concerts came no, up. No, I think she, not while we were paying off debt, nah, though. I don't no, think while so we were paying off debt. Shout out to Beyonce, no concerts came up during that time, so that um, wasn't an issue for us. Then we had plans, so we started 2018, yep. I think we were planning to go to Greece. So I was like, that's a plan for our, our wedding anniversary. Like, we can't change that. Uh, and there were like four other bullets on, on, on that contract that I made him sign on Valentine's so Day. One of the things on that contract that stuck out to me that I really really thought was uh, useful was we're going to talk about money and have conversations about it. Okay. Because Beyonce is cool. The Grease thing is cool. But it was <laughs> like, all right, we're going to come to money conversations as a family. Mm -hmm. And we're going to sit down and talk through it as a family. Right. And all decisions will be made 
together as a family. Yes, <laughs> I was like, one right, band, one family. I was like, all right, that's that's the type of stuff you want to see in a contract. That's the type of stuff that's like, all right, she's really into it. She's buying into the thought of us paying off this debt. So you mm-hmm. said that I'm like, all right, cool, I could do that. Right. Everything else was like, all right, hopefully Beyonce gonna go on trips and stuff like that. Listen, so yeah, we, so we had the contract and we had the course. Both of them and our, was necessary on Valentine's Day. And our contract <laughs> was on our fridge for yep. a, a year and a half. It was on. It there. was it was old it at was that crimples. point. It was crim- <laughs> it got water on it. We got to But you saw it, it was right in the fridge because you see it every day. Everybody got to eat and go in the fridge every day. So you're looking at it every day. Definitely. Um. So we had the contract. Did that. Um. Paid off like the twelve thousand. That's when I think another shift happened, where you were like, okay. So we both agreed that we'll pay it off by my thirtieth birthday. Yep. This hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. And so, what consisted of that one fourteen? So, boom. Here's we. Here's here's what the breakdown is. <laughs> so, hundred fourteen thousand dollars of debt. It consisted of sixty thousand dollars of your student loans, your graduate Math, student loans. Yeah, my graduate. You got your master's degree at Hofstra University. Shout yes. out to Hofstra. Yes, I love my program. Don't be throwing shade. Very Thank private. You. Private. Very school. good program, though. Private school <laughs> loans. So that's about almost. That's about half. It started right there. at sixty-eight, but I was paying it, and so we were down to sixty. <laughs> and these numbers are gonna be. Like, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it was about sixty thousand. Sixty thousand dollars of student loans from uh-huh. her graduate uh, university. That was like a year and a half. It wasn't I had even, about. Wasn't even living on campus enough. <laughs> not even I hope, hopefully you got your money's worth I got my money's worth hopefully you got it was your a good time worth. I truly that enjoyed my master's of, program that is a lot of student loan debt it is a lot of student loan debt luckily for of me two years is that two years it was yeah it was about two years uh, 30, luckily for me my um, parents paid for my undergrad so I just had grad Shout out to the parents too because yes. that was <laughs> we would have had to pay because they off. were like, no, ma'am, <laughs> I wouldn't have paid that off either. They're like, you did, you, we did undergrad, grad is on you. So, so fine. then we had uh, my student loans, University of Albany, uh, that was about twenty four thousand mm-hmm. uh, dollars. I went to University of Albany for about three years or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. So that's about twenty four thousand dollars, and then our car, mm-hmm. we uh, when we moved down to Dallas, I got a great job. We had a great apartment. You were you turned thirty. I turned thirty. We got a dog. We had an open concept kitchen. That was part of it. <laughs> and, uh, I went to work, and my my team. I, I managed a team. At, I managed a team of like twenty people. At, now it's like thirty five people. Mm-hmm. And I pulled up to the office when I came down to Dallas, and they was like, "Yo, you can't be driving a Honda. You a director, bro. You can't." And I'm Who like, said that? Hey, that's what they said. <laughs> so I'm like, "Nah, you're right. I'm saying it." And I'm trying to justify this purchase by saying, "But that, that was your dream car too." It was, it was, but I'm trying to justify this purchase because now it's like, all right, I'm sitting in traffic for longer. Uh, this, this, it is, more. A, this is efficient. This is better on gas. It's a hybrid. So I'm trying to justify that large purchase. Mm-hmm. But my Honda was paid off at that time. It had 60,000 miles. It was a 2008. It was white. It was clean. I could have kept that car and gave it to my grandkids. Definitely, because so, Hondas last. They definitely last. <laughs> so uh, that my car, car had broke down. So, so I traded that car in for a 2014 Q. 60 Q50S Infinity Sport. Yes. Red. Red. <laughs> Candy red. Super dope car. I love it. It's paid off at this point, mm-hmm. obviously. But that car was about 20, 28. 32? And I had I a trade remember. in I had a trade in from the um the Honda too. Mm. So whatever that equates to. And then lastly was just um credit card debt. Credit card. We had about four thousand dollars of credit card debt from the holiday season. Mm-hmm. Or well, we didn't spend four thousand dollars at the holiday season. We might have. No, you, we your, did your, not. Your gifts would be expensive. <laughs> your gifts are pretty pricey. But we had like credit card debt too. So credit that, card debt in general. So that's what the hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. And that math may be off a little bit, but it was one hundred fourteen thousand, and those numbers are kind of rounded yeah. estimates. Mm-hmm. And so that's what that consisted of. And so when we decided, so we're like, all right, we're gonna pay this debt. What we learned in the course really that we say was game changer for us was budgeting. Yeah, That was a big deal because we weren't budgeting before. We were paying all bills on time, of course, there was never any issues. But what budgeting allows us to do is let our money, what is it? Let So a budget is you telling your money where to yes, go. Yes, versus that's the, your That's the biggest thing. You hear the word yeah. budget and you're like, ah, I'm not budgeting, I don't wanna be, de- I don't want I don't my money, into this. I don't yeah. want money to determine what I could do and how I could spend it. But when you take money, when you take your money serious in your finances, your budget is mm-hmm. really you telling yourself how you're gonna spend your money. Yeah, and, and that's really what it was. That was a big that was a big deal. I mean, it took us maybe a few months to get it down packed, 
But when we did, it was an eye opener because we were able to see like, okay, how much money were we spending in certain areas? What was left over? Meaning yeah. once we did our bills and everything and we budget for everything, we budget for restaurants, we budget for Uber, we budget for brunch. Like we budget for our dog blue. Yeah. Budgeting, had- everything was in that budget. And I think that's a key thing that people miss. You think it's just, you know, the mortgage, this, the, like daycare, those type of yep. big items, but everything was budgeted in to there and then that helped us to see like well why we got a thousand dollars left over why we got five hundred? where was this money going usually when we weren't budgeting like it was we, disappearing it was like magic wasn't like mad we were, <laughs> was, we were swiping on a debit card we were <laughs> utilizing we were using it it was um, like magic so that really helped us to see and so that leftover money yep. went towards debt that contributed to really go towards debt um we did not stop our 401ks uh, we were still saving a significant amount monthly. Yeah. If we stopped those things, we probably could have paid it off way quicker. Um, but we still were paying those things. And then, of course, the budgeting, but side hustling. Um, side hustling and budgeting is Ooh, what... The, we back to the hard dog hustle. Is what made us... <laughs> hard dog hustle was ...be back. able to pay off all this debt so quickly. So we were working like crazy so we were working that, like crazy i mean where do we start with the working shoot <laughs> so you said you said side hustling so where do we start with that uh we was on good morning america too and they called us a side hustling hard zogs we didn't even talk about that we didn't get there but yet that's a part of but our that's story. part of it we'll talk about all the public all the things that we were in but yeah so we started the first side hustle we did was to we worked at the gym we worked at equinox gym yeah and Oh, before no, before you were serving before too. No, before that we worked. No, I was the car was on the rental platform. Was that before it? That was before Equinox. So I put my car on my brand new car, my 2014 Q650 Infinity. Put it on uh, a platform called uh, Toro, Mm -hmm. and I was renting my car out to people who were coming to Dallas. So anybody traveling to Dallas, we were in the airport dropping it off, and that was bringing us a good four to like six. $600 $600 a month in income. Sometimes seven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To, to pay off this this car. Mm-hmm. So that was the first thing we did. We put on a car rental platform. The next thing was we worked at Equinox. We worked at the gym. Yeah. So you started working, working out. At, uh, he was working at Equinox. If you don't know, Equinox is a high-end luxury gym all over. The highest of the high. All over um, America and some places in London as well. So he started working she knows there. All that. <laughs> <laughs> he started working there um, after work. Like I said, I was working from home and I was getting off at 4 p.m. Central. Yep. So I had a lot of time left. Um, so he was after his job. He was going in. Um, working and so I was like, well, I should get a job too. Then, like, what am I doing now? <laughs> I was, I was slaving. I want to work at, I want to be able to because you get free membership when you work there. Yep. Um. So I'm like, I want to be able to work out at Equinox. Um. And they needed somebody at the front desk, so I started working at the front desk. So we're mm. both working. <laughs> mm, exactly. But you were working. He was working way more. Like he was doing almost a full time schedule at that place along with I his nine to five. Some weeks I had thirty five to forty hours. Yeah, you were. Working. Killing. You was doing like Tuesday to Sunday, some craziness. I was working nine to five and then like five to ten at yeah. the gym. Uh-huh. And listen, we had we had goals. That was a go- my goals was the goals. Well, like I said, when he to help has us pay a goal where he's on the straight and narrow. So you were doing that. I was doing that as well. Um, so we were both working at the. We gym were both at the same working. Time. Had the dog at home. I got off at four o'clock, so work was five to ten. Um, the way that we were able to do that, because somebody people were like, what? How is this possible? Um, it was pretty flexible, right? So the manager knew that both of us had nine to fives. Um, as a part-time person, the minimum you were required to do is 15 hours a week. So you do three five-hour shifts, you're done. I mean, you can do it Saturday, Sunday, and one day in the week, and you're done, right? Uh, we were doing more, uh, but that that's what allowed us to kind of work at Equinox, still have nine, nine to five, still have time for each other. Um, Because whenever things got to be too crazy or we felt like or we're just passing, not seeing each other or spending time together as a married couple, we just wouldn't work. We just, you know, because we just pick our schedule and say, like, we're not working this time or whatever the case may be. Having a flexible having a flexible schedule at a flexible job was key. A lot of people always ask a question like, what's the first thing you do when you're trying to pay off debt or you're trying to make more money? And when Mm -hmm. I tell someone get another job, they're like, whoa, what you mean? I don't got time for that. I ain't got no time. Uh, I I wanted the money, but I ain't want to work for the money. Yeah. Listen, the first one of the first things we did was got another job and that's what allowed us to get to where we are and we both were just working 
Yeah. Until we, we, until we figured out everything else. Yeah. So we had our nine to fives. We were having the car be on this platform. Toro, yeah. Um, Toro, because at this time we had two cars. So we, his car was on the platform and then I still had my car. Did we put so your we car on the still, platform? We put my car on the platform. Um, and then, uh, but it was on its way out. So it, was, it didn't last long. That car okay. was on the platform for probably... Uh, let, let's tell that story quickly, it's too. It's like seven months. So I don't we, know. we had a renter drive to Austin in your car. And on the, and way, on the way back, back, it broke down. Broke down midway through. But listen, I got AAA, gold AAA, <laughs> thanks to my dad, and we didn't have to pay anything. The car picked them up from Austin, the truck, really. Customer <laughs> service is key. And drove them all the way back to Dallas, and we switched so out. Imagine, we gave them his car, actually, and, uh, Infinity. And, imagine if you, you, come into, you come into Dallas for a trip, <laughs> you got your wife or your significant other, yeah, it was you, a drive, you drive to Austin, you're like, I'm going to have a great weekend, it's going to be a great time. It was a great weekend, it was on their way I back. Know, I don't know, <laughs> I don't think the weekend was that great when they came back. <laughs> and on the way back, the car breaks down. But our customer service was amazing. We called them immediately um, when we found out, when they let us know. Yep. We got them the AAA, like you said. Yep. And then when they came back, they had a brand new Infinity waiting for them. Clean. They were very, very, very thankful. They was like, you don't got to do this. Like, no, nah, bro, go ahead. Take the car. Leave me a, leave me five stars, please. <laughs> that, that's why customer service is key no matter what you do. So, yeah, so we were renting the car. We were working at Equinox, and then we both had our nine to fives. Equinox was bringing in... For between both of us, maybe like I don't know, a thousand to fifteen hundred yeah. a month, maybe something like that. Um, then we still had the car going, still had our nine to five. So remember, we're budgeting, so whatever extra money we're not using is going towards that, and all this side hustle money is going towards that. So we were yeah. able to still live off of the income that we had. Yeah. Um, and a bit major key of that too was she said not raising our income, but also we didn't not raising our income, not raising our expenses. We didn't change our lifestyle at all. No, because some people, but also people say like, well, what did you cut? Yeah, we didn't cut much. No, only because you said we couldn't cut nothing. Yeah, I was like, no. I would, I would. We would have been <laughs> on you, rice and I beans. I think you called the. I think you called the credit card company to waive the yearly. Yeah, fee. we did little things like but we. But there wasn't much. We waived some fees here and there. We Maybe got we a, changed the cable plan. We got in your sure. father's um phone. His phone bill. We yeah, his, yeah. That, that was, saved us hundred dollars. That saved, $100 that saved some money. So. Yeah. But um, you could you could only lower your income. You could only lower your expenses so much. Mm -hmm. But you could raise your income as much as you want. Your income earning potential is endless, essentially. And when mm -hmm. we learned that, that was a complete game changer for us. So we raised our income as much as we could. Yeah. So we did that, and then we started. This may not be in chronological order, but we said that we got a dog when we moved out here. So we started watching dogs. We, we, and put, we put him to work. Let, let's be clear. <laughs> I didn't say this part yet, but I will say this throughout. Um, all of our ideas come from... Um, I was about to call you Tony, but Anthony comes they, from they Anthony. Can call me Tony. We getting personal here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only call him Tony. <laughs> All of my ideas comes from Tony listening to podcasts. Okay, yep. so the Toro thing was from a podcast we did. Uh, we put we started watching dogs from this platform called Rover, which basically is like a a pet sharing, like you a peer to peer, a peer to peer pet. Pet watching. <laughs> yeah. So instead of your, your pet going to Pet Smart and being around mm -hmm. a bunch of dogs, they you bring your home. pet to a residence like us, um, and we watch dogs for so, them for as much time as they need. Right. And so we, I was like, no. I'm like, why? Why would we do that? Like, we you have was not our with that one at all. No, I'm like, I have our dog. I'm not really a dog person, nah. but um, I don't think either of us are. Oh no. You know, I you know, I'm fine with my dog, but he's like, Oh, let's just give it a try. Let's see. Uh the good thing about that platform is like you pick your rate, like you can say how much you're charging. You also say how big the dog is, if they had to be neutered, but you know, things like that. You put in your restrictions into those things. Your preferences. Um, your preferences. And so we started watching dogs. And so at first it was just one dog plus our dog. That's and the max. The stipulation was let's just see how it works. That's how that's, that's how everything that's goes. how everything starts. That's like, how just, that's how we like, got let's here. Let's just try it and see how it works. <laughs> yeah. So let's see how it works. So then we were doing that. Like I work from home, so I was able. It wasn't anything additional. Yeah. Besides like some dogs that came that would cry to be in the kennel or like mm -hmm. things like that. Um, and we had wood floors. So if any accident, if they peed or something, we can just wipe it up. It wasn't a big deal. Um, you know, until it became too much. One time we had like four dogs as we started getting our regulars and we're like, oh, we're watching another dog. Don't know if you care. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. And each, each dog was about $20, $25 a night. And if you got four or five dogs, you see how that adds up and then you got them over the weekend, which yeah. is a higher rate. And then we started raising our rate too. Well, the more reviews we got, the more social proof we got, uh, the more that we raised our, our fees. Yep. Uh, because of course they take a cut as well. But um, so we're doing that. So 
We have Rent in Our Car, Ron Equinox, who are watching dogs. I'm a mental health therapist that I started working at a private practice, which means like just going into um, an actual location and yep. seeing patients. Um, and so I was doing that twice a week and on Saturday, like Saturday mornings or something like that. So that that was happening as well. You in was between, always at the house. In between still working at Equinox and everything else and still maintaining our nine to fives. And so that was going on. Um, then what else did we do? You did some surveys for yeah, a while. Yeah, so I was, doing, done that for a while. I was doing online surveys, a couple hundred dollars here and there. Yeah, it wasn't, but not as frequently. Yeah, it wasn't life-changing money doing that, but that was something that was also allowed us to, to bring in extra hundred dollars here and there. Um, but that was, that was nothing crazy. Um, and then what was the other thing? The last thing was our cleaning business. Last thing is the cleaning business. I just wanted to be sure. I, th- I thought that was everything. So we had the car rental. We had the dogs. We have Equinox. That's three. We have me doing private practice. That's four. The surveys here That's and five. there. And then the cleaning business uh, we started. We started so, the whole cleaning business. Yeah. So the cleaning business, we started it. Uh, it's a cleaning business that we own down here in Dallas, Texas. And we don't do any of the cleanings. And we've started it that way and has maintained that way for the past four years. We started it to help us get out of debt. But as you can see, we were side hustling like crazy that we really didn't need the income of the cleaning business because we were still able to throw so much money yep. towards debt. From us living within our means to all the side hustles that we had to to everything else, we were able to throw towards that, like thousands of dollars we were throwing monthly. And so the cleaning business, we kind of just kept that money in the cleaning business. We didn't yeah. we didn't touch it. All money um, in, like Nipsey Hustle says. Okay. <laughs> That's like a thing. It's a thing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so we did that and that was that along the lines is what helped us to to pay off our debt the side hustling the budgeting all of that and we paid off our debt we were going we celebrated my 30th in um houston Houston. so like days before maybe two three days before we paid it off officially so they can reflect by the time my birthday hit um that it was a zero balance huh so you want to go to houston with no debt yeah we want to go there with no debt so that was a period. and people they all people always ask like so what was that feeling for you once you paid off the debt and um no big feeling <laughs> no, i wasn't it wasn't anything crazy we, we like pop champagne we like pressed it together like pop champagne and kept it moving um but the big feeling happened the next month when we didn't have to budget for debt yeah so when we sat down as a family and like we do we do monthly budget meetings every time we have a new month we talk about our goals and we have a budget meeting Mm -hmm. we sit down and we reflect on our finances so Mm -hmm. this month when we sat down and did our finances we realized all right usually all this money is going towards debt Mm -hmm. now that money is in our account so yeah so it it felt like which is so bizarre it felt like like what do we do with all this money (laughs) and you probably like what yeah that's what it was because like i said we were still saving uh we were still doing our 401ks like those things didn't stop so some people were like well we'll start this back up Mm -hmm. and so it became like all right well let's build up an emergency fund um let's be able to invest more let's Let's, do some of those things let's travel because we went to maldives and dubai (laughs) yeah let's do some of those things that we might have been been holding off on yeah so the first thing we did after we paid off the debt was built up our emergency fund and emergency fund is just money that you have obviously Mm -hmm. in case of an emergency Mm -hmm. so we said all right what do we want to do we said we started with three months i believe right yeah and then you were like nah i don't want to do three months (sighs) that doesn't seem like enough of an emergency fund and then we ended up raising that emergency fund to six months. Yep. So right after we paid off the debt, that was our next goal, to build up an emergency fund of six months in case we ever got laid off or something happens where we got injured and we couldn't work and we had six months of expenses to Despite live. Despite us having these multiple jobs yeah. and nine to five, so I highly doubt that all of them would have stopped at one <laughs> yeah. at one time. But yeah, that, that's kind of that was the thought process during that time. So during that time, we just, every money, every month that we had that budget meeting, Mm -hmm. we would say, all right, you know, this money is not going to debt anymore. Let's throw that money into our emergency funds. And that's how we, how we built that up and for a six month emergency fund. Mm -hmm. Then it ended up becoming a year emergency fund. I don't know what you want to do. COVID happened, you know, things happen. But even, I forgot to speak about throughout the process, because some people would say, well, did you not travel? Did you not do anything during that time? Like when we were paying off the debt? Uh, We did. Remember, he had to sign a contract. Like we can't be 
clank to this thing that we ain't doing nothing else. Yep. Um, we still went out as you know as we wanted to. Uh, we still traveled. I probably traveled more than you. Um, but we had when we started. I think paying off the debt. It was like January, February, 2017, and we already had plans to go to Hawaii in May of that year. So we still went on that trip. Um, I a few trips up to New York because that's where we're from. So we went there a few times. Um, I actually went to Trinidad for Carnival, which, if you don't know, is very expensive. Definitely um, is. So I did that. So we still were doing things. We still um, think, I don't know if we went to a Miami trip or a DC trip while paying off the debt. I think we went to DC when the museum had just opened up. So we still were doing these things while, and that's the reason why raising our income was so important to yeah. us and why it, you know, why we needed it to be that way for us. Yeah. And we didn't talk about our travel savings account too. So when we were still paying up this debt, we were we still were saving for travels that yep. you wanted to do. So mm-hmm. we had a money. We had a, like hundred fifty dollars coming out every single check, every single every two weeks or something like that. hundred fifty dollars mm-hmm. going to an account that we never touched called a travel fund, so that mm-hmm. we were able to when you wanted to go to New York or you wanted mm-hmm. to go to Miami, whatever you wanted to go. Because you want it's to just go, me. It's just me want, that want to go places. I obviously, I don't, I, don't, yeah. I don't really travel too much, but uh, I'm not. You a big, travel. I'm, you just don't. Uh, uh, I'm not for it as much yeah, as Yeah, you, you never are. have the like, oh, let's go here. Yeah, that's, that's not, not his That's thing. not my thing. Yeah. I'll go once I'm there. It's lit. It's turned up. It's a up. good time. But yeah. we had this travel we have this travel fund so that every time, you know, every check we had, we had $150 coming from that check into this travel emergency fund. Mm-hmm. Just in case something coming up we want, we want to travel, we always could just pull from that pot. And we still do that to this day. Yeah. So I mean the pots increase significantly, but yeah, now it's like four or five hundred yeah. <laughs> that come out for traveling. <laughs> I didn't know it was that much because <laughs> we gotta we have to travel more. Things are happening. Um, so that does that describe our full pay debt payoff story? I'm trying to think through things that I know that people have asked along the way. Um, how do you get started? How do you get your significant other on board when they ain't down? That's the thing. I didn't get you on board. You got yourself on board. I just had to show you that I just had to show you that there was another way of life and you eventually Right. That's so the possibility. Like like we said, like when we first heard about paying off debt or when I first heard about paying off debt, I'm like, Who? What? Who's doing that? Yep. That's not possible. We can't do that. Why why are we discussing it? Why mm-hmm. is it you know, because it's never been anything that I spoke about with any family member about pay- you just know that you have it like i've known that my mother paid off her car <laughs> like, yeah. um and honestly i know that my mother paid off my undergrad undergraduate loans too but with something so significant with it being so high at like that sixty eight thousand, is kind of like that is a lot of money and it, it will, and it would it's going to be there so i don't see the reason for us to touch it <laughs> yeah and my major thing when i was bringing you, you these conversations you said you wanted to travel, and I said, all right, we could travel as much as we want once this debt is paid off. That was your thing, yes. You like, said, let's pay it off quickly. The quicker we pay it off, the quicker we can the go. More, the quicker you, it's like a, it's like a kid when you, you got you want to clean the room. It's like, oh, you clean your room, you go outside. Uh. Like, you're going to clean that room up fast, right? You're going to clean that room up fast because your thing is like, all right, at the end of the day, I'm going to get this done so I can do the things that I really want to do. Mm-hmm. And that's where people kind of get, um, they get mistaken when they're going on these journeys. It's like, well, I'm going to drag it out as long as possible. No. Get it done as quickly as possible so that you can do the things you want to do as soon as possible. Or do some of the things you want to do in between. So- <laughs> yeah, listen, most people end up not paying off their debt because they want to do everything in between. They want to drag it out. They still want to go to brunches. They and they they're not managing their money correctly. So that's the thing I think because we still went to brunches. We yeah. still did everything, but we raised so much. We were raised our income so much that it allowed us to do that. Yeah. Now, if you're just paying off debt and maybe you're just working off of uh the income that you have from your standard nine to five and you're not bringing in anything extra i think that yes it would take you definitely longer because you're like well i only have like 300 dollars extra here i can't throw that towards that i got other things may pop up and that makes it harder and so that income raising was key for us and would we wouldn't have been able to pay it off so quickly one with it being two of us that helped Two, with us being high income earners that help. And then three, with us raising our income significantly helped us, right? And it's not just high income earners because 
we know doc. I mean, we all know doctors and lawyers, and they make way more money than we than we do combined. Um, combined, yeah, you you know it all the time. But they just don't want to pay off their debt, which is fine. Like that's not even something they think about. Mm-hmm. So it's not only just because you have the money. Of course, you'll do it. It's all in discipline as well. Like how you're showing up, how you're deciding, what you're deciding for your family, and what that meant. And so for you, what would you say paying off the debt meant for you, or why was it such a, a push for you? Yeah. It's changed. It's changed our life so much after paying off that debt because now we don't have to. It's kind of like you 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 free yourself from these burdens that you had before. Mm-hmm. So if we never decide to raise our income again, we know we don't have to worry about paying off our car or paying off any student loans or anything like mm-hmm. that because mm-hmm. it's no longer there. So that's one less burden. It's just actually three, four less burdens you got to worry about mm-hmm. that you're not shackled to every single month. Mm-hmm. So that was the biggest thing: removing those those shackles from 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 debt. I think for me, the biggest th- the biggest thing was uh, the mindset change. So it just became a whole n- a whole new world yeah. of like, okay, you can pay off the debt, right? So I no longer have that burden, like you said. Not that I thought of it as a burden. Like I said, I thought it was just there. You didn't um, think about it as nothing. It was, I didn't it think about it as nothing. It's part of life. You pay the <laughs> bills, right? Um, and but also it just opened, I think, my eyes to. A different part, like I said, I bother you about a different part of Twitter. Open my eyes to that, like that entrepreneurship and so much more. Because that after we paid off mm. the debt, that's when things start to trickle in. Because I want to talk about that. Like so when we paid off the debt, what have we done since then? Mm, did things stay the that's same? True. The are is it? What did we do after? So you just mentioned a good key that once we paid off the debt, or at least during a debt free journey, we were exposed to more. We were exposed to more different knowledge type, and different people, information, and stuff, information, information, yeah. and networks. That was the that was, actually that might be now you're trying to change it. Now you're no, trying no, to steal my stuff. No, that, no that's, that might <laughs> that might be it because when we paid off the debt, now we're exposed to more information, more mm-hmm. knowledge, and just a bigger network of people that are doing this type of thing. Mm-hmm. So that changed the game completely because once we paid off the debt, now we're in these different communities. We're seeing what other people are doing outside of paying off debt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the type of, because the type of things that people are doing is, it was, mind just, blowing, like, it yeah. was just mind blowing. So mm-hmm. before that, I was like, I was never exposed to any of that. Mm-hmm. And now I'm bringing different uh, ideas to you every single day, every single week that other people are doing. To this day. <laughs> to this, right before, to this we, day. Right before we recording this episode, I probably still bringing ideas, ideas to, you. to me. I heard this on a podcast. <laughs> that's that's what he gonna say to this day. But yeah. So since paying off the debt, we've been exposed and we've met a lot more people and um, received a lot more information. Yeah. We so probably we wouldn't off- be here if we didn't pay off this debt. No. And you got a cool debt free shirt on. You probably wouldn't have that shirt either. Yeah. I'm so, don't worry, I was going to talk about so my debt free. Se- <laughs> <laughs> my shirt says debt free AF, uh, which is a shirt that we sell, basically. Um, promoting us being debt free and we had people family and friends and just other people buying it because they're like even if i'm not debt free i know i can work towards it i can strive towards it so uh, it was just a mindset yeah so this would be in the notes at the bottom this is the link <laughs> <laughs> we're still new here the link it would be in the notes at the bottom but once we paid off the debt that was like january 2018 we took a quick trip to mexico to just celebrate was that like cabos a- yeah, Cobbles we went to. Um, did that. Then that May we had, we were planning for Maldives in Dubai. So we did that. That was a really, really good trip. We did the, that was, and, yeah, the best. And I don't, we probably would have did it if we didn't pay off the debt. But coming back from that trip and not having to worry about that nothing. trip coming back with you not enough people go on trips they put it on credit cards listen we are not anti, we are not anti debt so don't don't get us wrong um so you go on these trips you put it on credit cards but now you're coming back from the trip and now you got to pay it off every single month and yeah. now you're like uh, another two three hundred dollars i gotta put to this listen, trip and now trips- these and dubai is not cheap okay <laughs> for those planning so us, <laughs> us coming back from that trip the trip stayed there and the memories came back with us so that right. was a that was a major thing we didn't have to worry about paying those bills every single week every single month right and so and we didn't have to we didn't have to uh i want to say fret at paying paying the expenses out there too no because a cup of hennessy was like 35 dollars, and it was, it was like a little shot expensive. it was very expensive was very, dubai was very expensive <laughs> so <laughs> so now we're out there we're debt free you know we got a little bit more money and you know we get a little 35 dollar hennessy shot not a little 35 dollar hennessy shot but 
Listen, just have your coins ready if you're going there. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so we did that. Uh, what else did we do the rest of 2018? I don't even remember exactly for 2018, 2019. But since paying off debt is how I would just categorize it. That's when um, 20, February 2020, I think, yeah. we bought a car, rental car, a rental car to put on a rental, another rental platform. Because once we paid off his car, we took it off. Yeah. Once You know, he, he was like, no more. Because <laughs> now at this point, we don't have the debt. We have, we have an emergency fund. We have our investments. And now... I was like, what else can we, what other type of business can we build yeah. to bring in so more income? Yeah, so we're traveling, people have weddings in Jamaica, you know, all these things. We're traveling. Uh, we bought another car um, to put on this platform. We, I finally agreed to an investment property. We got our first um, investment property. Which he has <laughs> been speaking about for a while. Um, so if we got a, our first investment property. We really started to ramp up the Heartrimony, our brand. Uh, we really started to take it seriously. Like we said, we started the page in January 2017. We stopped it. Not stopped, but we really weren't posting like that. No. And then I think once we paid off the debt, we started talking about our story more. We started sharing more, which you always say you wish that we shared before, <laughs> like sharing during the process, showing sharing earlier. But I don't want people in my business. So, I get it. Um, uh, so that we did. Then we also, what else did we do? We started, uh, I think the next biggest thing was we started a course on our cleaning business. Well, no, before that, you did start a course. You did do a debt-free oh, course. Oh, a debt-free course. That was the first course we've done. So I created, yeah. So once you started sharing our story, people started mm -hmm. asking questions and mm -hmm. people wanted to know how do we do it. So I created a course. Um, what was the name of the course? Debt free, free, debt freedom. The oh, link, the, the guy, link would be in the notes. It was a guy. It was guide to debt freedom, and yeah, it was just a, revolved freedom. around us telling our story, but also the steps that we took to get out of debt. So how to do a budget, um, how to decrease your expenses, what avalanche, to do, avalanche versus, versus snowball, snowball there's different yeah. types of methods to pay off uh -huh, your debt. So uh -huh. we created a whole course around you know those type of methods that we did to pay off one hundred and fourteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars in twenty three months. Yep. So did that course, but then. Um, in 2020, June 2020, we launch our biggest course to date. It's only our second course, um, which yeah. is our uh, cleaning business course that teaches people how to clean. Um, no, how to start how to start your cleaning business. How I'm to very clean. sorry, you don't even know how to clean. Wow, what the? <laughs> she don't clean. We have a cleaning service come in that we own, so she doesn't know how to clean. I'm gonna know why she said she was our course. I don't you. know how to clean. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> How do I not know how to clean? Like you I don't know how to clean. Swiffer or something. I don't clean. There's a yeah. difference with uh, not knowing how to clean and don't cleaning. What the? <laughs> not know. Okay, I got you. I know how to clean people. Okay, <laughs> I just do not clean because yeah. we own a cleaning business. Um, but the course is teaching people how to get their cleaning business up and running without having to clean. Um, and so that has been big for us because. Listen, I actually thought, you know, he did the debt-free course on his own. And so we were like, maybe we can do something together for the debt-free course. I'm like, I think more people want that. I don't think that people want to hear about the cleaning business. Um, but boy, was I wrong. Yeah. And uh, that has really taken off to be one of, along with our cleaning business itself, one of our biggest uh, businesses, side hustles, uh, yeah. part of our life, franchise that we have um, going on here. So we've done that as well. And so people always ask, so, so what's next? And I'm like, we got a lot going on. So a lot is next. So what's next is baby on the way, March 1st. That would be the drop for it. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Hopefully closing on this house soon. Closing on a house. Hopefully by the time this releases, the house will be closed on and we'll be moved in. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and then also uh, starting this podcast, another business. So all those things have happened since paying off the debt. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, like I said, the traveling, we've done way more traveling, just to different places. Um, and, that and we've been be also able to give more. Yeah, we've been fortunate enough to be able to help friend, family and friends out mm -hmm. you know, at the drop of the dime when they need something, you know, especially financially. Yeah. Also, if they need our time, like we've we just traveled back to a, a four friends, um, friends passing. We go back pretty we go back to New York pretty often. We yep. gave we gave to friends for um housing issues. So being able to give more. We give to our church obviously. Yeah. Um, we were able to tithe more once we paid off debt. We were tithing but not the the ten percent they asked. <laughs> um, so now we do we were, once we paid off debt we're like, let's put that in. And even though right now we don't have a home church because uh, we moved away from the location, COVID happened 
And so we watch church on the TV, but we still continue to tithe because we watch yeah, um, we watch T D Jakes on a on an iPad. Yeah. It's crazy how life works, um, man. But we still continue <laughs> to tithe because yeah. it's his money. Um and not T D Jake, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's the Lord's it's money. A bit of his money too. Uh, it's the Lord's money. Get some new shoes. And um without him we wouldn't be here. So and we understand that as well. So that I mean, that that's a lot. We so we paid yeah. off debt side hustle like crazy and we see the fruits of our labor daily and that and so and that's where we are now yeah i don't got anything else to add to this to so add we, anything else so on your side no any other tip that you would give them if someone wants to pay off debt what tip would you give them as always i would say raise your income as much as you can because you can only cut so many expenses your earning income is unlimited and i would say budget 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 like get on a budget know What's where your money is going word? exactly budget. um know where your money is going and uh yeah yeah, guys, so appreciate you guys being here. Again, we appreciate you guys watching the Hard Dog Hustle podcast, being here. Um, subscribe to YouTube. If we create a YouTube, make sure you subscribe to it. Uh, subscribe, like, <laughs> download, leave some reviews for us, all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, you could dream all day, but the hustle is what's going to get you there. And we out. Peace. This has been an episode of the Heart Dog Hustle podcast. We hope you enjoyed. Be sure to rate and review this podcast on your favorite listening platform. And follow Anthony and Janilka on Instagram at The Hartrimony. That's T-H-E-H-A-R-T-R-I-M-O-N-Y. Keep hustling, baby. Keep hustling, baby. Get that money. Get that money.